Hello everyone. Welcome to our online worship on this, the first Sunday in Lent. Our Gospel reading today is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As most of you know, Reverend Geraint and I moved house in November. Now, I would class myself as a tidy person who tries to keep the house clean and tidy and welcoming. But despite my best efforts before I moved, I had found a number of cupboards in my house where all my unsightly rubbish and no longer needed junk had ended up. Instead of living in the debris of my busy life, as it is now, I seem to have shoved it all into cupboards. I'm hoping this is not just me, and that most of us have cupboards or perhaps a room in our house which we'd rather our visitors didn't see and which we're never quite sure what to do with. Just as it's true of our houses, I suspect this is also true of our lives. We're very good at presenting the best version of ourselves, even subconsciously. We put on a face and pretend everything's okay but we rarely open up the doors of that cupboard where we store our guilt, where we hide the aspects of our character or our history, which we'd rather not open up to anyone, even to God. Yet God longs for us to be the place where he may come and abide. God wants to be with us, even in that messy cupboard that we hide all the rubbish in because of our shame the slow and uncomfortable process of opening up that messy cupboard of guilt and shame to God, of opening our lives and our hearts more and more to him, is a key part of the discipline of Lent. In the earliest centuries of the church, newcomers to the Christian community were baptised at Easter, that time when the church celebrates the conquest of death and the beginning of new life. But of course, believers had to be prepared for this great event, prepared by study and prayer and taking a look how, the, how they lived their lives. It was believed that this clears the way for God to make his home in you, like clearing space in your flower bed for bulbs to break through in spring. This is how Lent began, a period when people were thinking about baptism and the beginning, beginning of new life. Whether literally as new converts to the Christian faith or for the rest of the church, people wanting to strengthen and renew their own commitment. This period of preparation quickly became associated with Jesus's 40 days in the wilderness where through fasting and prayer, he discovered what God was asking of him. During the early church, it became more and more common for churches to tidy up and strip away some of their decoration to make themselves look a bit simpler, an outward manifestation of the inward stripping and inner austerity that the season entailed. Vestments were made either of sackcloth a simple coarse fabric, or purple associated with judgment 
and the season began with Ash Wednesday. Here believers were reminded of their mortality and called to turn again to Christ. All this simplicity and stripping away is important. In fact, it's vital in that process of clearing a space in our lives to experience Jesus afresh at Easter. However, it's also important to remember that the word Lent itself comes from the Middle English word for spring. This season is not about feeling gloomy for 40 days. It's not about making ourselves miserable. It's not really even about giving things up. Lent is springtime. It's our annual spring clean as we prepare for that great climax of spring, Easter. New life bursting through death and flooding the world afresh with hope. And spring is exactly how this season should feel. In this season, we are confronted by the universal subjection of humanity to sin and death. And that's an important part of the story. But whenever we reflect on our own wrongdoings, we are reminded again of the abundance of Christ's grace and his mercy. Sin is wintry, but like the flowers of spring, the forgiving love of God in Christ abounds and gives life to all. Death and sin are destroyed by an opponent who utterly overwhelms evil with the abundance and generosity of his love. In Lent, we return again to Christ, the fountain of mercy, and seek to make room in our hearts to know and experience his extraordinary love for us. If you would permit me, much out of character, I'd like to offer a couple of concrete suggestions for keeping a holy Lent this spring. Firstly, we could find some regular time to encounter Christ in the Bible. I suggest reading Mark's Gospel from beginning to end. It's not that long. Taking it in small, manageable chunks and asking yourselves two basic questions about each bit that you read. What is this passage saying to me? And how am I going to respond to it? With prayer and patience, this engagement with the words of scripture is a vital part of clearing a space for when the risen Lord comes at Easter. Secondly, and perhaps more practically, I believe a good Lent always flows out in generosity. There are many ways to try and be more generous in this season. It doesn't have to be with money. It could be in service or in prayer. But I would like to suggest one that is often neglected. In this season, I would like to encourage us all to attend to the relationships in our lives especially those we've neglected over the past 12 months. Is there someone who irritates you or you struggle to love? Perhaps befriend them, pray for them, or try and restore that relationship if it's safe for you to do so. Is there a sick or elderly friend or relative you've not visited for the last few months? Could you make time to rebuild that relationship in the weeks ahead? Perhaps harder still, is there a relationship in our lives that remains damaged? A relationship that haunts that inner cupboard of guilt? Can we allow the new life offered to us in this season to flow through us, cross over barriers of pride and reach out and say we're sorry? Work to be reconciled and begin to make our lives ever more a place where God would be pleased to dwell. And so as we prepare ourselves for Easter during these Lenten days, we must remember that what motivates us and fills the horizon of this season is not self-denial as an end in itself, but trying to sweep clean the cupboard of our own minds and hearts so that new life really may have room to come in. And then once it's there, can take over and transform us 
when finally Easter dawns. Amen. <laughs>